Uh, what we can do, why don't we... There you go, I'll remove that. Why don't we get started and have a little bit of a catch-up. Uh, I... Yeah, Selene is running Casimir to the nearest cleric. Uh, pretty much. In fact, uh, why don't we actually start with Casimir? Um, no, and... I haven't had time to practice accent. <laughs> well, if you need to, you can just go... <laughs> also, can't speak. I am so. <laughs> All right. All I need Casimir to say to get instant character, okay? Casimir, I need you to say, I am the machine. No. Because I am salt. <laughs> Come on. Um, then, oh, how about this? If not Casimir, for, for understandable roleplay reasons, because you are, in fact, a um, you are a Casimir statue made of sea salt, uh, would you like to give at least a brief, um, a brief recap from Norlai's point of view? Uh, yeah, they almost, like, crushed my skull, and I don't appreciate that. Uh, my head is not harder than diamond. That hasn't yeah, been proven Yeah, she'd be smarter than that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so what, uh, <laughs> they, they were trying to do something to your, your skull there. Uh, can, can you give a, a quick little, uh... Like a, a quick little, you know, what what did you see or what was happening? You got to be questioning something. Okay, so Casimir is salt, right? And Norla is bones, right? Um, so they're like, oh, we can fix Casimir by crushing this diamond. Oh, we can't crush diamond because it's a freaking diamond. So, oh, let's use Norla. She's made of crystal. But, you know, not diamond crystal. I'm purple. I'm probably an amethyst. <laughs> hmm. So that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, that, that got pretty tense there for a moment, huh? Although, just to the rest of the party, and this is more in Celine's realm than anyone's, but it technically hasn't been proven what kind of crystal she is. So. Hashtag just saying. If you need to use her skull as a mortar in a pinch... Yeah. Uh, no, no hard science has been conducted on her remains yet to determine uh, what in the heck is going on. Um, all right, so yes, uh, so Casimir uh, is uh, is PJ Salty, and um, and Norlai is uh, PJ she, 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 she's salty in a different form uh, at the at current events. There's a lot of salt going around from this player in particular. <laughs> there is a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Uh, let's go over to uh, Morde uh, Mordecai. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go to you here. We'll just kind of work down the line. Um, what is going on with you, Mordecai? Um. Well, uh, the 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 monster thing that was coming out of the out of the ocean was a bit of a terrifying thing. So I spent the minute it takes to conjure up a teleportation circle, and I got us out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we need to bamf out of there. So uh So yeah. Um I was not exactly happy about the fact that uh that we were getting attacked by mana wars and then those things had vampires in them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't exactly have a love for vampires. I mean, that kind of makes sense. But, uh, yeah. That's, uh... I was not... Especially if that thing looking at us was canceling out some magic or something. I have yeah. no idea what was going on with that. So, that's primarily my shtick. If I can't do my shtick, then <laughs> I am... I am royally boned. So, yeah, let's not do that. Now let's uh, pop over, unless there's anything else. No, no? I'm right. fantastic. Well, of course, Mordecai's fantastic. We all knew that. You can always, you can always repeat it though, so we don't forget. Uh, let's always. go next to Investigator Jacob Stillwaters. And Maros. 
Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're end up saying more of a suspect at this point. Um, given the recent, well, horrifying uh, instance that we have just ended up going. However, at this point, I need to end up here processing dutifully. Still, one hopes that this individual is capable of giving answers. At this point, regardless of their current condition, they are capable of uh, giving at least some degree of answers. At the very least, letting us know what the hell is going on in as far as they know. We end up having them here dressed here accordingly, and they are currently manacled, and I am trying my best to keep an eye on them as I would think a gag would be appropriate, but would also be harming the investigation. At this point, I have done everything I can to be amicable of the individual and their personhood. Whether that personhood is still in debate, I leave for philosophers. At this point, it is a suspect in custody. That yeah, that uh, it, it perhaps isn't uh, your job as a, as a police officer, or particularly an investigator, to uh, to classify life forms or the the moral ramifications of. Uh, you know, diseased individuals, perhaps. Um, but for sure, you do have a prisoner, and you you did go out of your way to try and uh, I don't want to say rescue out of a out of like a selfless uh, out of a selfless or purely selfless, as you wanted to get answers and to do your job. But uh, that sort of deference and that short that sort of commitment did seem to weigh her opinion as she. Uh, as she was able to shake off some of the bleariness and uh, submit to your authority, and uh, and as you ducked behind the uh, the sand dune as the sea anemone was attacking, uh, you know you were you were acting in a in a professional manner around someone who has clearly been through a lot uh, and probably in a short amount of time at that. Um, I'd imagine so, or perhaps a long amount of time. I do not know the suspect's age. That's true. Um, okay, anything else uh, from you, um, Investigator Stillwaters? My concern is, is that this... The answers we seek may not be the answers we wish, nor are they the ones we wish to hear. At this point, given the suspect, we can only end up imagining that... They'll be hesitant to cooperate in the most part if they have any degree of patriotism. Though perhaps that is merely my human understanding of the situation and in doing so may be coming about this in a wrong direction. I wish I had a better guide towards understanding what it is I'm dealing with, but I deal in facts and figures, not hearsay. Well, uh, perhaps when it comes to someone who can, uh, despite her short nature, can sort of straddle the line between facts and figures and the, and the unknown or, mi or things that are misunderstood. Uh, we have Bright, um, our lovely little uh, pink-haired gnome, now down to one floof, uh, due to a heroic sacrifice on the beach. Um, Bright, what is, what's going on with you? Uh, actually, not that much. Um, I mean, we ran from the from the from the enemy but too because if it was stuck in the water then we were actually pretty safe from it so maybe that was a mistake i don't know um but i mean the priority now has to be on bringing casimir would say back to life but i don't know if he's technically alive right now i mean that's really more of a question for celine but um fixing casimir that's important and we have to get back covers and see what's happening there. Because it could be, I mean, we could find almost anything. And it's something that only we can deal with. So that's that's the main thing. Um, I don't know, it's just been a really tough couple of days. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, sorry, there's a little dog. I'm looking forward to, um, <laughs> I don't know. 
just a little less stress, hopefully for a day or so. That's all. Okay. Her name is Noelle. Twenty-five. That's my passive. Yeah. It's performance, not That's perception. That's performance, though. Oh, that is it. Oh, let me say it. Ha! It's a crit instead. <laughs> <laughs> Natural twenty. 
I haven't drawn that comic yet. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I got so caught up, I was muted uh, for that last little part of narration. Sorry to everyone who's watching that out there. Um, anyway, uh, so Mor Mordecai uh, put on a performance instead of uh, perception. Did really well with the performance, and then, I guess, crit a uh, perception here. As they landed on the outskirts of town, big bright flash, poof, and then a column of smoke from the interior of the city. Instead of them manifesting there, then, poof, there we go. Nothing phases me. Yeah, this is, uh, well, you're starting to get, uh, you're starting to get a little, dare I say, jaded. Uh, to to things. Um, all right. So as you're noticing this, the the pillar of smoke, despite the uh, despite the daylight, um, is showing this this red illumination from underneath. And at the same time, you really shouldn't be seeing this kind of light on a pillar of smoke in the middle of the day especially not as it still continues to rise high into the sky uh, there's some other uh, warm glows and Mordecai you swear that there is also black illumination to the smoke now the smoke itself is is a black smoke you know campfire smoke or whatever I'm sure you've seen you know whatever you drive behind a semi truck and pff, you know what comes out there but to your eyes you're seeing something like black illumination on the on the underside of the the billows of the smoke. Have I ever seen anything like this before? No. Um, now, are the, the first thing obviously that comes to mind, especially with this uh, this perception, you know, give it to you for free that this is this is not natural. Um, this fire is. Um, I mean, it may have natural uh, fuels or something in, involved in it, but to get this kind of illumination, this kind of effect, especially given the circumstances of the teleportation, um, th there is something very unnatural, uh, arcane going on that is causing this to happen. Okay, so I just turned to the others and I just let's say, okay, um... We should have landed at the circle. Not here. That smoke looks bad. Yeah. I don't even know how it's how a teleportation circle spell like that could could land off course. That doesn't even make any sense. Uh it so the smoke Can the rest of us see it or just Mordecai? I would have pointed all, it out to you. Yeah, all, all of you uh all of you can see the smoke. I was just giving super details to Mordecai about the smoke and some some Most other uh, thoughts that could smoke. come alongside. Oh, I'm sorry, Casimir. Kaz yeah. Casimir does not see smoke. I mean, maybe he does. Is he pointed at the smoke? <laughs> no, no. Casimir is holding battle axe. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Casimir okay. is not pointing. So we, we does the this. Thing to be coming from the vicinity of where Mr. Halver's place was, or is it coming from somewhere else? Well, I'm very glad you asked that, Bright. Would you please make an investigation roll, and we'll find out. Oh. Oof. In, I know where Mr. Halver's place is in the city. Um, it is possible that it is, it is coming from that area, but from maybe this this part of the outskirts of town. Um, or the angle or something. It's, you know, it's it's definitely not like, oh, it's it's whatever. It's not the Western Gate, uh, but it's it's coming from the interior of the town um, further away from you. So it is w definitely within the realm of possibility that this is coming from that district. Uh, okay. All right. Well, should we go check it out? I mean... We're carrying this. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we might have to split up. We might have to leave, leave Celine, with the salt statue, and the rest of us go. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know anything about restoring people from salt, so I'm useless in that regard. Uh, Celine. Mm. Uh, I know what I would what I would want to say on her behalf, but Selene is such a. No, I, 
I was actually going to say she's such a fickle person, um, but that's probably more true than we know. Um, uh, but, you know, whatever. Celine's also an NPC right now, so if it's in the realm of possibility, then lethality will just have to hashtag deal with it. Um, Celine says that uh, if there has been in some sort of an accident, uh, and especially because Celine needs special components to bring Casimir back, uh, Celine can take Casimir to a temple to Weejas in the city. And so if if any of you want to go with her, you can go and visit this temple as well, as there is most likely going to be uh, bodies to process and or living people to treat, or in this case also, Casimir to be restored uh, from her, uh, from her, uh, his uh, salty state. Uh, so we can entrust, if you entrust uh, Casimir to Selene, Selene will make her way to her temple. Hey, do you need like a, a cart to, to carry him in? Uh, yes, Selene is going to need some kind of uh, transportation because she's not too strong. I'm going to oh, cast oh, Find oh. Raider Steed. Oh. And I'm going to. It's going to take ten minutes, but that would give me something. Allow me. Immediately, uh, Jacob. I'm assuming there's a lot of hustle and bustle to the city, right? Uh, like, normally, what? yes, and especially in an emergency state, there's probably going to be even more. Mm -hmm. Um. Given the puzzle and bustle of the city, would it be out of the question to end up assuming that there's either somebody who is with a cart that is already going down the street, especially if they're trying to get away from the fumes? Um, that's what he's that's what he's looking at. Sure. Um, as you were shunted uh, to the edge of the city, you weren't exactly manifested on a main road going in. But as you're scanning around, you're looking at the city, you know, Bright's trying to, you know, figure out where in the city, that, you know, kind of pinpoint the smoke. Um, uh, Jacob, you do look and just, you know, just about 100 feet over uh, is one of the roads leading into uh, into the city. And no one, there, there hasn't been an exodus yet because apparently this just happened and, you're, and you are, you know, a mile or a mile and a half out from the, the center of the city. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's people on carts, and, and they've just stopped, and, and they're they're gawking, they're just they're looking up and pointing, and uh, all sorts of uh, rabble, rabble, rabble going on. I'm going to specifically look for the one with the whoever looks like they can use a little bit of a boost in the day. Um, you know, maybe their clothes aren't as fine, or they don't have as much inventory, or whatever it is. So I'll leave that to you. But you'll end up going to that individual. Sure. Um, roll an insight. Sure. All right. With a 22, you're scanning. Uh, your, your mind is turning over oh. here, and uh, and there is there is a cart with uh, with two tieflings uh, riding on it. Uh, looks maybe like a. Kind of like a ma and pa, uh, very rural, uh, rurally dressed. And the mm -hmm. the woman, pr presumably the wife of the two, is is definitely doing the, the gawking and staring. And the the husband just has his his uh, hand or his head in his in his uh, hands, and is just shaking his head like this is this is the worst day ever. Um, th there's just an unmistakable aura of. Uh, can this really be happening right now? Just emanating off of this poor tiefling farmer? Something. I'm, I'm, I approach the two. And I end up speaking here in Infernal. Um, specifically to end up keeping to native tongue or in respect. So, madam, I end up showing my yeah, insignia of rank. My name is Investigator Stillwaters. Don't worry, you're not in uh, trouble. In fact, I wish to end up uh, asking uh, of you a favor, in which case uh, the Green Shield will end up uh, compensating you accordingly. At this point, uh, we have a individual here who is requiring temple. So if you are able uh, to end up uh, escorting them and 
here towards here said here temple you would be compensated in here at good time the, the, that we have an emergency we must uh, get to the kind of gestures to that and we can't make for delay uh you're presenting a badge of office uh you're you're speaking earnestly uh the the husband still has his face buried in his hands and the the wife looks over um, and uh, she says in, in heavily accented uh, common, my husband does not speak common tongue. I will. He's been speaking infernal this entire time. Oh, he has been. I, I, I stated oh, that shoot. earlier. I'm, I'm sorry. He did say that. that. He did say that. Okay. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I missed that then. Um, no, oh, th then in that case, I, I reverse and we've, we've split off this alternate reality that we just created uh, and we tuck it away. Oh, hey, Mr. Wolfie. Thank you very much for the raid. Uh, welcome to you and the others. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome. Spam a couple... Uh, I'll give you all a couple Tuesdays. Thank you for joining us for our roleplay. Um, so, I'm sorry. So, in Infernal... Uh, so in, as you start speaking, he, he actually, both of them look over to you. This... Uh, oh. Go ahead and make a... Uh, A persuasion, and and for all of, you can do this at advantage, uh, because of the circumstances. Wow! How? Oh my! Derek dice. Um. So for those of you who don't know, I ended up rolling a zero and a zero. A zero and a, all right. Can someone like screen uh, clip that for me, please? Uh, this. I got you. I got you. <laughs> that, <laughs> the... At advantage. <laughs> I know y'all out there can't see it because the, the Twitch chat is covering it up, but there are two red goose eggs uh, for this persuasion chat. I, I rolled less than the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving that right now. Yeah, the, this is... You can clip this, too. Uh, this, this is where, in games like this, uh, many sentences begin with statistically, comma, <laughs> um so <laughs> all right well the, the family's not going to suddenly like implode in a time warp and you know and just uh, a suction into infinity is going we're, to occur we're denied um <laughs> but uh <laughs> hang on i'm not laughing at you Derek. i i i, I am not i'm not uh you're, you're laughing at me just i mean just you get kind of are it. But it's you okay. <laughs> oh, I, the, the, the circumstances are just so baffling. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say baffling and uncanny at the same time. I have a cat behind. There you are. Oh, all right, so you have... <laughs> that's her commentary as well. Hi. Um, all right, so you're there, and, and you go up, and you're all the temple and everything, and the two are just looking at you. And and they're, they're just having such disbelief, perhaps, at the circumstances... Uh, or or this that they're they're just kind of blankly staring like maybe you thought you were speaking in infernal and you accidentally like slipped into uh, into another language um, as, as as you rush over here and, and they're just uh, what you police um. That, yeah, please don't share that with everyone. That, <laughs> come on, Nisa, that ain't free. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's got cat butts for sure. We got cat butts on cam. Well, to to make uh, the situation a bit later, um, is this Sultan or Orla? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Oh, like the Morton. Oh, I mm -hmm. love it. The, the you, you have the salt spilling out behind you. That's the best ever. Be sure to post that. Yes, please. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so Jacob, uh, you, you're over there, and, and you're having this odd communication, uh, this odd sort of communication uh, with with this couple, and uh, and and the husband finally, after uh, after some time. Uh, you want ride into town, yes? And even as Infernal is, is kind of uh, is kind of broken, 
Uh, so he might just have grown up like extremely rurally, or it's a it's sort of a, a, an accent within Infernal uh, that might even be causing a little bit of the, the communication error. Um, you want ride? Ride? He gestures to Celine and the statue of Gazmir. Uh, ride. Ride. Temple. Ah. We'll end up sending them to temple. <clears throat> and uh, and he, he takes a look and the the husband goes, uh, uh, five gold. E-, and then suddenly just, <sighs> thank you, Nisa. Come on now. Oh my gosh. I love you, but your tail is going wild. My gosh. Come on. Get back up there. All right. Temple. <laughs> Yeah, five gold, and and the wife, the, the wife, uh, uh, slaps her husband's hand. No five gold. You take temple three. And the husband looks over, <sighs> looks back over to you. Uh, temple three. Good. Bring them along. Yes. Thank you very much. The city of Green Shield, yeah, thanks you very much for your service. And places 10 gold on the wagon. And he tries to be smiles and all this, and as soon as he walks away, you see, you, you know the meme angry face? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and as you're walking, the, the husband says, oh, but I say five gold, and, the, and his wife just, no! You be respectful. Uh, and uh, uh, and so it, it looks like uh, I mean Celine's still there, Casimir's still there. Uh, Bright Bright might have wandered off just a little bit. She's definitely within eye view. She's not that far away. Um, just kind of scoping things out. Maybe she's still looking at the interior of the city, trying to figure stuff out. Um, but. Uh, what, uh... I, I, I just walk up... I'm sure that I've seen Jacob having a little bit of a struggle here, and I just kind of pat his shoulder and say, all right, we're good, right? Get them on the wagon. Gotcha. <laughs> and so I go to... He, his head starts to turn, and you kind of hear this cracking of his neck, like... You all right? Not something you want to hear right now. He okay. pulls out his note, makes a note of the two, and what goods they are carrying. You're writing very aggressively in your notebook. Yeah, we yeah. just... Uh, Got the vein I'm in the forehead. Selene and I are getting Casimir onto the carts showing them away and I look over to Jacob and see Bright somewhere I'm sure yeah Bright's on I, right I looked I went just a few feet away I I thought that might go badly but I guess it's gonna work out after all so no no worries let's are we going yeah, I'm ready all right all right uh, so Selene and Casimir are being carted off with this uh, kindly old country couple. Um, uh, Mordecai, make a... I don't know, just a... I'll even give it a... a let's make it a history. Go ahead and roll a history uh, check. Cool. Decent at those. Okay. Uh, that's going to be enough to... Uh, with some other context clues, their accent, maybe the, the wagon and some of the, the words and whatnot on it. Uh, these are tieflings that are from the semi-nomadic uh, tribe around the landlords. Ooh. And uh, their their wagon is covered as far as what their the goods are inside. It looks like there's something piled inside. But uh, given their, their dress and their accent, uh, they're from the, the kind of nomadic uh, masons that have been carving out the mountains. Um, on the west side of the island for centuries. Mm. And I know that their infernal is a little bit weird. 
Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, they're simple folk. Uh, it's accented, uh, maybe more along the lines of what, you know, ye olde English kind of would be. Or, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, if, if any of you have, uh, like, an, well, here in Ohio, like, there's Amish country not too far away. And, and so if you speak to the Amish, they can speak English, but it is accented or their vocabulary is different than those of us in in non-Amish or, you know, non-Amish society. And so the way that they speak, it would be more like, uh, you know, the founders. Uh, we, we talked about the pilgrims, the, the tieflings that first started settling here. So mm -hmm. their way of life is more of a throwback to the, the pilgrims or the founders of Mesomasca. Uh, it's very simple. They make these, these very monolithic carvings in the mountains, and they've just been slowly drifting south with them from, you know, ever since they started landing here. Um, so their their way of life, the way they speak, it's infernal. You can't understand it. It's just a little bit different. Okay. Mm, we're just kind of walking towards the smoke or running towards the smoke. Okay. Um, so as you're moving to the interior of the city, there's definitely now people, you're encountering more and more people coming uh, from from the, the center. Well, not necessarily the center center, but the interior of the city. And... Uh, uh, Bright, you are getting more and more of the sense that this pillar of smoke is coming from that kind of a abandoned district where Mr. Halvers was. And um, and uh, scooting through, and uh, uh, Jacob, what are you doing with the prisoner? Are you, you're just dragging her along, or what are you doing in this case? Keeping her covered best I can to end up keeping her some like, exposure to the minimum. Okay. Uh, Sometimes it's just a small thing of putting them on the shaded side of the street when we're you know, going towards. Okay. Do we have to split up, or are, or are we all traveling together still? Jacob doesn't have any intention I... on leaving you all alone. I assumed we were together, yeah. Okay, then in that case, I cast Arcane Eye. Okay. I want to finagle the eye underneath the... Um, the covering of the wagon. Okay. Of the wagon that Celine and um, uh, uh, Celine and Casimir are on. Okay. All right. Uh, it's moving slow enough that you can you can certainly keep the eye up with the wagon here. Uh, so you're you're sending a little spy is kind of a harsh word, but a spy with them, and uh, just to make sure things uh, are going all right as you're moving along. Um, all right, so getting through the city. I'm trying to peek under the under the covering, though. Oh, okay. Um, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, vital information. It has dark vision, also. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. What you see under the cover are uh, there's rocks. Uh, perhaps some very crudely carved rocks, um, but you're seeing just a pile of rocks that has a, a tarp over it. That's they're not what I expected. Not like big quarry <laughs> blocks, but they're definitely, you know, kind of decent snowball-sized rocks. They look special, or do they just look like rocks? Uh... Make a nature check. A... Ah, look at that. 18. 18. Nice. Okay. The rocks are from the mountains. Uh, they, they seem native. Um, they have been... Uh, they ha they've been hacked at to, to create these, like, flatter, flatter surfaces. Um... So these are maybe some quarry cast off, although there's something, there's something, uh, I don't know. There's something's going on with these rocks. And, uh, can you now make an investigation at advantage because you're, you're putting clues together a 10 or a 10. Wow. We're just having uh, some, uh, some double numbers here <laughs> still with a 10. It seems like these rocks, they might be cover for something, because especially because of all the, the flat surfaces and the hard corners, so they can kind of, like, rest on top or not slide around like 
because they, they're they're worked rock, um, but maybe a little too worked. So there could be something underneath the rocks um, that hey. that they're piled over to make it look like oh we're just bringing rocks into the city. Hey, can I find like an inch wide gap in the rocks to see if there's something under there? There, uh, sure. Uh, so over the course of time, you're trying to like like bop the uh, the eye around, and unfortunately, like there's there's too many like too many rocks, or there's not enough gaps that the eye would be able to penetrate more than just like the the first layer. So it's just, it's rocks all around that your eye could see. Okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm not gonna do anything just yet. I'm gonna let, let things develop some. Okay. But I'll keep the eye up, because it lasts an hour. Sure. All right, so you're making your way through town. It's getting harder as you're going uh, to the interior. You're having to take, uh, well, not shortcuts, but long cuts uh, through the streets. Um, you know, going down an alleyway where maybe no one is because everyone's trying to move. Some are moving in, moving sideways. Many are moving out. Uh, there's all kinds of, you know, there's there's really not a role that's necessary because you're hearing all kinds of, oh, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. Um, you know, it, we're under attack from the Shadahar Empire. Um, oh, it must be, uh, you know, it must be the work of, um, you know, the Thieves Guild Wars are, are going on right now. So someone must have done something really bad. Uh, it's, uh, it was a military experiment gone wrong. It's domestic terrorism. It's, it's all kinds of things that are just coming up that people are, are just saying. So there's real, there's really no consistency, and there doesn't seem to be anyone who knows. But there are many people that are contemplating. So broadly, I mean, if you want to explore rumors, you have a very, a very broad selection of rumors that if you want to explore, you may. But there's nothing that's really sounding, you know, people more than it's just conjecture as you're making your way through. So uh, you spend uh, more time to uh, to come through here, and you find yourselves uh, eventually. In the in the the district with the ruins, and there is a ruin where Mr. Halvers was, but you don't remember there being a tower, let alone a ruined tower. Now, of course, there was some uh, there were some you know spaces around here and some other kind of decrepit buildings. There's like the warehouse and, and such. And a lot of that has been um, sort of has been uh, blown out, but there's a crowd around this tower that burns with black, orange, and red flames. So Mordecai, this is uh, th this is showing you that black can apparently burn and provide some weird illumination, even though it's black. Sitting at the top of the tower is a black sphere just like a black sun that has set on top of the tower. There's rubble all around. Uh, this, the tower is, um, uh, again, the, the tower there's just doesn't, where'd this come from? Especially bright. I mean, because you stayed at Mr. Halver's. Um, th there was no tower that was here, and now there is. Uh, go ahead, though, bright, and make a, uh, make a perception uh, for me, please. Okay, uh, so before I do that, I want to say that my speculation is that this is the way Mr. Halvers was all the, all the time, and that it was, like, dimensionally folded into a very small space. That's my that's my conjecture. And then, I, what is it? Perception? Yes, please. <laughs> that's not very much perception. Well, uh, for, from this distance, you're... <laughs> Your conjecture is your conjecture, but you're finding no visual evidence of such. Um, there are uh, so there are there are people milling around. There's people that are rubbernecking. Uh, a lot of guards are are around here as well, and and they're keeping you know stay back, stay back, stay back. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of firefighters are here, and they they have these these uh, very kind of rudimentary like pump trucks, uh, and the water doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, to the flames. The flames just seem to burn without... Uh, it's not that things aren't ignited per se, but the water isn't putting the flames out. 
Well, and why would it? Okay, I want to send the eye up to the um, to the sphere at the top to investigate it. Okay, you, you're gonna have to summon it from like a ways away, so it, it's gonna be moving thirty feet around to go over. Because no, that's fine. Okay. I mean, it was it was with us in the cart, and now it's it has a new mission. Well, well, you all were walking here. The cart was going to the temple. Well, so that's why I asked if we were splitting up. Oh, I didn't realize that that was what you were talking about. Well, yeah, you all sent you sent Casimir and Celine to the temple, and you all were going to go investigate the. I I thought when you said that, if you meant were you further splitting up, and I figured that was just well, go take Casimir okay. and tend to people. So. Let's let's rewind reality again. Um, so I would have had to send the RK and I with them, and that's fine because I got okay. that information. And okay, so now the eye though it's going to be like five miles away from us at least. Not that far. Uh, I mean, you, you could call for it. Um, that's it, it. Just it's not immediately here with you. Okay. Um, so that's different then. Um, I'm going to leave the eye where it is okay. and think of something else to do. Sure. All right. <laughs> uh, so we're, uh, despite okay, we're we're on the sameish pageish, ish, again. <laughs> um, all right, so bustling crowd, uh, people milling about. Um, there are uh, there are also some uh, some police. Uh, in fact, uh, investigator Jacob Stillwaters. Uh, you're seeing your contemporaries here in uh, in Oldport. Um, they are. Uh, they're, they seem to be looking around, uh, looking through some rubble. Um, it does look like there uh, there are some carts that have uh, bodies with sheets over them, uh, so people have been hurt or killed. Uh, and there's there's uh, other uh, other people as well. Uh, your your police senses are tingling. That of course, whenever something like this happens, there are opportunists uh, who are just waiting to pick a pocket or uh, maybe find something. Uh, find something valuable, like, you know, oh, a, a fancy building that apparently appeared out of nowhere uh, has just uh, collapsed or blown out. You know, maybe there's a golden candelabra or something like that that they can that they can take. So there are people that are trying to put out the fires. There are people who are trying to provide security. And, of course, there are others who are taking advantage of the situation as well. All right. Well, I think it's about time that I end up speaking with my contemporary, see if I can end up getting yeah, their first in that analysis on the situation. So, when I end up here approaching one, obviously, I end up here showing my, yeah, or my insignia. Okay. And at this point, I begin conversation trying to end up ascertaining what exactly is going on here. Because as far as Jacob knows, this tower is a natural thing. It's been here this entire time. So. Correct. Uh, okay, so you're, uh, there is, uh, while you're in different municipalities, uh, there is definitely a, um, th there's a, you know, we recognize you as a, a fellow, you know, brother in the police force, uh, kind of a deal going on, a, a reciprocity uh, going on. And so you are, uh, as Jacob, you're going to get caught up that this tower appeared out of nowhere after this explosion. Um, all of this, this fire is coming from somewhere and a lot of people are hurt and we're trying to figure out what's happening. Uh, some of the city's mages are, are here and they are, uh, trying to examine things as well to figure out, uh, what is, uh, what is happening. Um, he rolls his eyes at the mention of mages. And, uh, they are, uh, they're hoping that, um, uh, in fact, one of them is, is hoping that uh, a rather... Oh, hey, we have a lethality now. Boop, 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 boop. Hi. Hi. Um, sit back and relax. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to you. Uh, Celine and Salty Casimir have been taken to the Temple of Weejas uh, because of reasons uh, that seem to be appropriate. Okay. Uh, Celine is in no harm. Uh, this is just for... Uh, administrations to Casimir and perhaps a lot of the casualties for what you're seeing on screen. Um, and don't worry if you're confused. We're still trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I farted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and so, uh, 
uh, you're getting you're getting this this uh, fill in. There's some police jargon, uh, things like that that you'll pick up, uh, and you're also told that um, they're hoping that uh, a very famous uh, magician by the name of Dallas of the Blue Flame will be showing up in order to help because uh, the 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 police force mages um, are are going to do the best they can, but uh, to have someone so famous in town uh, to help figure out this mystery of this burning tower that apparently appeared in the middle of this uh, derelict part of the city. Um, you know, it, it'll help them out. I'm currently here. Yep. Don't I have some news for them? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 just in, in the entire invade of, oh, they won't tell us that the blue flame to show up. Well, <laughs> about that. <laughs> Oh, Celine, you're not here. Um, you took Casimir to Temple to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, no, no, that was just out of character. Thing. You're you're Thank riding God. in a wagon with a, a very nice uh, sort of a, an Amish tiefling couple uh, from the countryside. So. And also, there's an arcade eye, but you don't know about that. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's kind of poking <laughs> around. Um, okay. All right. Waiting so... for Dallas of the Blue Flame sounds like a great idea. I'm sure he'll be here any minute because he's totally not dead. <laughs> You've encountered Dallas of the Blue Flame? A couple times. I look forward to meeting him in our travels. Yeah, I'm sure that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh. Well. Whew. <laughs> I'm kind of this... just looking for people that are hurt. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's uh like we'll we'll say there's a little like a, a little medical like a, a couple wagons are over here. Uh, of course, there's guards smattered around around a bunch of people watching this tower burn and not burn at the same time. Uh, you have others that are, are still trying to put out the flames. Uh, you know, there's probably like a some sort of like a an emergency like responder, a little like a tent that's been set up as sort of like a command center. Um, so yeah, th there's people that are here that are trying to address the situation, if you wish to go to a particular place. Okay. Is there any way we can... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying that there's no way that I could put out the flames, so... Um, Why don't we try to get as close as we can and see? I mean, these have to be magical flames, and we won't be able to figure anything out about them from all the way back here. Yeah, let's do I will that. Escort, I will escort these adventurers near closer in to end up gaining a better near point in ascertaining perhaps any information that they can end up finding will end up being able to assist the yeah, Dallas of the Blue Flame when he arrives in order to expedite, expedite the process. Ah, because he's totally going to be here any minute. I, I'm excited to end up near, near meeting him. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you're you're waiting for that, Mordecai. Are you, you're going to like investigate the flames, or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to look. I want to inspect them, magically speaking. Oh sure. Um. Don't have identify ready, but just to maybe I can make like an arcana to learn something. Sure. Uh, you can you can roll Arcana. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize it was my turn. Oh, right. I mean, this is kind of narration. Twenty-seven. Time. All right. So uh, as as time is is going on here, you're examining this. Uh, bright, these flames. These flames are magical, but they're not magic flames. They're not. Um, it's not like a natural fire that's been caused by magic. Like, press the digitation, kind of, pff, you turn your thumb into a lighter. You know, you know, you have a, a pipe or something, or use it to start a campfire or whatever. Um, it, it, it's also not something like a fireball that are magical flames created magically. These are magical flames that are natural to not hear. These, these flames are from someplace else 
Uh, oh. That's interesting. Okay, so um, it sounds like the fairy fabric of space and time is on fire. So that's good. Good. <laughs> as good, good as the apocalypse is, I suppose. You're not here. Uh, so, the fabric of space and time is flammable. I mean, that's that's the what seems to be the case, yeah. But for now, either. But I'll make a note. Uh, Bright, as your as your mind is contemplating this and you're examining, uh, you're examining the the flames and you're you're turning over. Apparently, you're dealing with you're dealing with magic, but this is not bread and butter magic at all. Um, there is kind of a, a like a, a hay, uh, except it's 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 an emotional. It, it's an, a very empathic. Uh, it's a very empathic hay. Almost like something that uh, that Peggy Sue, you know, as you communicate with her, um, except it's not Peggy Sue. Uh, what you're seeing is maybe a, a snake. Uh, it's something. Uh, it's it's hidden in the darkness, and it speaks to you in uh, Draconic. Do you understand Draconic? Oh. Okay. So it says things in Draconic. Um, it repeats the same verses. Well, it's, it's really like one verse. It's several lines. Um, several times. Um, and then it kind of uh, disappears. It... So that's interesting. Is there any chance it was Yori? No. Uh, in fact, go ahead and make a perception, uh, and we'll see what you were able to glean from this. Eleven. Okay. Um, I'm not great at perception. Maybe you just have them on your mind? Was was it like a silver scaled? Was this sort of like a a mini? A mini halver? Uh, or some sort of like a, a, a familiar sized silver dragon that was kind of hiding out? Uh, still, it just it uh, it got your attention while you're examining this. It's repeated something in Draconic, and it just disappeared like it never existed. Huh. Did I get any sense the... of where it was coming from? Um. Well, no. You you could see. So like underneath some rubble was a little like a a, fa a shadowed face uh, that was just repeating this, and it disappears. And despite the dust and everything on the on the on the debris, it's like it never existed. There's no little paw prints. There's no scratches. It's just a figment appeared. Your brain, if you're going crazy, then a part of your brain at least partially understands Draconic because you told yourself something in Draconic that even you don't understand. You want to talk about magic. And um, then it's gone as if it never existed. Okay. Um, so that's another mystery. Um... It's good that we have so many mysteries. At least we'll be entertained. Uh, I'll let someone else take a turn now. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mordecai, you're examining the flames? <clears throat> yeah, I was examining the flames just to to see if... Are they projecting heat? Um... It's an unnatural heat that you don't feel on your skin. You feel... You feel like it's kindling some kind of a... Um, an emotional heat. It's something that... I don't know if it actually has a kind of an equivalency. Um, but it, it's as if you, you are getting closer... It's almost like a terror, but it's not necessarily uh, mechanically in D&D a fear effect. But something in you just feels like you're... It's just this instinctual fire bad. And it gets... It, while you're not feeling blistering heat as you're getting closer, even as a tiefling, 
uh, you you're just getting this this feeling, and 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 so one of the one of the the officers is going to come over, sir. Please, uh, uh, don't get too close. Uh, uh, especially, uh, especially to our kind. Uh, he kind of like leans in for this part. It seems to be having a an, an ill effect. It's on just tieflings. Yes, uh, it, there's something. I. I, I can't explain it. I, I don't claim to know about magic, but just being this close to myself and others, and I've, I've noticed in speaking to other passersby uh, that are, are tieflings as well, it's provoking some kind of a... a reaction, a, an emotional... something... something spiritual, even. I, I can't... Just please, don't don't stay too close. What do you mean, spiritual? Well, uh, there's all kinds of faith here, and people take, uh, well, something that happens like this that's full of mystery in various ways. Uh, I'm not a particularly religious man myself, though perhaps I should be after today's events. Uh, but just some kind of a, a feeling, a, a fervor. Hmm. Interesting. And despite the lack of words to fully describe what's happening, both you and this this tiefling officer, there's a heavy implication that you two, like, there's a resonance you two are sharing simply by just acknowledging this substance. Um, hmm. You don't have the words for it yet. There's still an understanding, an underpinning meaning that you're getting from each other in just being uh, being conversational about this and within a proximity of, of the fires as well. Okay. I have a thought. Oh? I want... Not really causing a fear effect mechanically. I don't know if this will work, but I kind of want to cast calm emotions. That's a neat idea. And ah. See what happens. Okay. And I'm gonna center it on myself and anyone else around me. Sure. Uh, each humanoid in a twenty foot radius. Okay. Um. I don't think there's anyone here that that's gonna fight you on this. Uh, is your um, now there is a, a verbal and a and a somatic component here. So how how are you doing this? Are are you like presenting yourself like everyone stay calm or what? How how is your spell manifesting through your your components? Um. So usually what uh what happens with the calm emotion spell is he'll utter a few arcane words and then uh and then kind of follow it up with a little bit of a speech because it's an action it's just like super short um, yeah yeah but kind of kind of evoking a we're gonna get through this this is temporary kind of feeling to the spell and bolster people against being like frightened and things or if they're if they are frightened to call them I don't know what it's gonna do but I, I'm trying it okay sure uh, all right so the, the people in the immediate uh, vicinity do seem to you know do seem to settle down there's there's less chatter um, there there are less people kind of clutching the pearls and, and gawking and in fact, a, a couple, uh, like a couple, just seem to. Um, actually, yeah, you have a what twenty-five passive perception. All right, that I do. Um, with this, you're you're seeing that especially the tieflings just kind of, they they shake their heads subtly, kind of like I don't know, do an eye rub, uh, and some other tells like they're they're coming to in a sense, 
and and they'll take their whatever their family or a friend or a, a whatever a significant other and uh, come on come on let's let's go and uh, i think we've seen enough and uh then the the tieflings uh kind of snap out of this and and leave uh though the humans and, and others who have gathered uh because look this is this is a large historical city um there's uh there's elves, there's even uh, some half-orcs and dragonborn from Kandor up to the north. Uh, there's uh, there's all sorts of people who are here gawking. Um, but in this area that you, you sort of, all right, settle down now. You, uh, the tieflings primarily are responding even better and are just kind of shaking their heads and blinking a couple times and, and they're, they're leaving. Okay. Cool. That's interesting. Um, so, and I, since I have centered this on myself, I also feel this, yes. Yeah, you are, whatever was kind of bubbling up inside, uh, giving you uh, a, a version of, like, butterflies in your in your stomach, except the butterflies are on fire. The fire's not necessarily bad, but it's just, you've never felt this way before. But you're able to kind of push things down and feel very at ease. Okay. And since that's the case, I'm going to go closer while the spell is still active. I'm going to go closer to the flames to take a look and see if it's an illusion. Okay. And I want to go with too. Okay. Uh, so the, the crowd's dispersing bright. You toddle over to, uh, to Mordecai. Um, and uh, so you two are going to begin uh, d- determining is this a, an illusion? You know the nature of this as well. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. Oh, cut. I, oh, I don't think it's an illusion. I just want to see how well the calm emotions protect me from it. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because Mordecai, you can move around and try and tag more people in this in this bubble. Um, and so yeah, I mean, bright. You can choose to to fail this, and you'll feel. Uh, less existential dread than you perhaps you were before. It's not that it's not there. You're just, uh, you know, Mordecai's making you not feel feelings. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> um, uh, let's uh, go over to Jacob. I'm going to do something with you, and then we're going to cut over to the temple now that we have Celine and Casimir. Um, sure thing. So, uh, Jacob, you're, you're talking, uh, some of the guards here, like, again, you're, you're getting some professional talk. Um, you're asked that, uh, hey, you, you're not, uh, you're not a part of our garrison, but I'm sure that, uh, you know, with reciprocity here, if you catch anyone doing something, although it, it kind of looks over like, oh, it looks like you might have already caught someone, uh, uh, pickpocketing. Uh, but do you, uh, if you can help us out, we'll make sure you get, uh, uh, you get some pay, uh, professional courtesy and all. So... At this point, he will kind of end up here giving the proper fear. However, it is done here, but uh, his proper leave. He first ends up, but before he does so, he needs to end up asking. He's, at this point, I need to end up uh, taking uh, uh, said suspect uh, to detainment, specifically in isolation, uh, as this one can end up being problematic if they had left in the greater hold. Is there any place I can leave for detainment? Or should I end up there, simply end up renting a room in a tavern and end up having her uh, placed on the side until uh, you can get this underway? No, we should have a wagon taking people that we've caught at the scene here to the, uh, uh, to the uh, holding cell, uh, nearest I holding sh- cell. I assure you, placing them inside a wagon with other uh, detainees, it would be the last thing you would ever wish to do. Well, do you want to ride alongside her? Uh, you could go in there with her. Very well then. Uh, otherwise, I can tell you where the I can tell you where our precinct is, and you can walk her there. That would be preferable. Sure. Uh, you'll you'll get some instructions then. Very um, well then. And. Um, and uh, you'll even, if anyone asks, uh, he'll give you a name and a badge number that said, you know, sort of professional courtesy in an emergency situation. You have someone to be held in a, you know, in a holding cell and, uh, and you know, things will work out on the, on the back end as, as uh, they, they try and catch up on paperwork after the emergency and people get a chance to breathe. Fantastic. 
at this point, I need to end up having some time with this prisoner, and uh, yeah, from the look of the situation, there's nothing we can do in the immediate future outside of what is already being presented. Um, okay, so, uh, professional courtesy, you know where the, the nearest precinct is, uh, that has a holding cell. Um, I mean, whether or not she can get, you know, uh, a one-room suite to herself is to be seen, but, uh, you'll, you know, you're given directions. Uh, just for poops and ha-has, just roll, uh, j just make a, a, a 2d20 roll. I'm gonna fail it anyway, but sure. Uh, okay. All right. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing exceptional happens like a, you know, a, a comical you know, tunes, my, you know, my, my keys are missing and all of a sudden I'm hand, <laughs> holding manacles that, uh, <laughs> that little twerp. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, you, uh, you move along and, uh, and so Mordecai and Bright are investigating things and looking around and trying to get people to, to calm Calm down. Sim it down now. And now let's head over to uh, Celine. Uh, we can we can sort of go back a little ways if you wanted to speak to this uh, this old, apparently like a, a country, kind of country uh, living tiefling couple. Uh, the, the husband does not speak common. Uh, the wife can. It's broken common. And uh, uh, if you wish to engage him there. Uh, however, as you would have been there for it as well, their infernal also has an interesting accent uh, in the way that they uh, the way that they speak. If if you speak it, I don't remember offhand your languages. Uh, uh, I have oh. um, abyssal, celestial, draconic, and elvish in addition to common. Okay, uh, then you could speak with the wife if you so choose. Uh, Investigator Stillwaters paid them ten gold to take you and the salt statue of Casimir to uh, Temple to Weejas here. Um, and so you're riding in the back. In the back is uh, a tarp covering apparently a pile of rocks. And uh, the, uh, the the couple, particularly the husband, uh, after, after teleporting to the city, being sort of bounced back in some kind of an explosion uh, to the outskirts, um, the, the husband was just oh, kind of shaking his head and the, the wife was gawking and pointing her finger. Uh, Jacob went over to try and arrange transportation, and now you're on this wagon with them. Um, so you can be quiet, or you can talk to them if you wish uh, during, you know, whatever, 10, 15 minutes to kind of go through town, especially uh, with uh, the, the, the more into town you're getting, there's going to be more resistance. So it might even take a little bit longer. Uh, so you can either be quiet or you can chat, but you'll have a little bit of time before you get to the temple. Otherwise, we can just put you at the temple. Yeah, no, um, I wouldn't have anything anything really to say because I don't have any... Uh, I can't... I'm not really conversant in Infernal. I know little bits and pieces. Okay. Uh, little, little phrases on virtue of the fact that I know one of its sub-dialects, but unfortunately, that doesn't help me any. Um, uh, well, not necessarily. As you are, uh, as you are riding along... And the couple is talking while they are speaking in an accented kind of uh, infernal. You are picking up that there are abyssal words and phrases that are peppered into their their dialect. Um, so th it's not it's definitely not a pure form, but this is this is more than just like, yeah, you know, Whenever you learn a foreign language, you learn the body parts and the cuss words first kind of a thing. Like, they're actually, you know, th there's, there's, there's dialogue that is, that is being taken in that, from a bissel. That actually understand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's, that's kind of being uh, twisted in there as well. Um, now, anything that they're saying isn't, uh, isn't necessarily bad. You know, they're not conspiring. They're not. Uh, you know, they're not swearing or being like, ah, ha, ha, this woman behind us can't understand us, so we're going to reveal our plot or anything. Um, it's it's yeah. conversational. The husband seems to be very, uh, very disappointed because uh, he seems to have lost confidence that he can sell uh, that he can sell the cargo in the wagon. And the wife is consoling him and saying, well, at least we have the 10 gold from that nice man. Um, and other things, too. Uh, you know, they're, they're talking about 
uh, daily life stuff. But for sure, that this is not a pure infernal. It's not a pure abyssal either, but it is a mix. Um, now, okay. would, would you, are you riding along silently and noting this, or do you want to try and converse with them? I'll I'll, uh, I'll note note it silently um, for now, and once we get to our destination, when we get off, uh, I will I will hand them another uh, six six silver and say that uh, good luck uh, good luck. Everything should be back to normal soon in a vessel. Uh, oh, there the the husband is gazing down at the at the handful of gold you just gave him, and the the wife is looking at you, uh, and in in pure abyssal, though it is still stammered and accented. Yeah. You speak the old tongue. I do. Uh, and she would hold up a. Uh... Hold up her holy symbol, denoting that she is a uh, worshiper of Weejas. Uh And uh, the the husband's still gazing down, uh, and, and seems to have like a tear of joy in his uh, solid colored eye. Uh, and the wife kind of baps him on the head, uh, and like takes a horn and and makes him look at you. Uh, and and they both uh, uh, they both uh, nod at you, and they make. Uh, they make an interesting little hand signal that you haven't necessarily... I mean, it could be innocuous enough, but both of them do a, a little hand signal in sync. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, make a history or religion at disadvantage. I'll let you choose either one. They're both the same, so I'll do... Uh, I'll do history. Why not? That's okay. a 13. It could just be a local custom uh, from these people. Uh, you know, just sometimes people just say, you know, aloha or hello, or or th they might have a salute like this or a salute like this. Or well, I'll, 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 I'll return it because it seems like the right thing to do in this situation. Okay. Uh, they both nod and... Um, if you need a ride again, uh, look for us. Uh and, and kind of like taps on the side of the cart and you can see that there's uh, you know that, that there's a it's not words but there's a symbol uh, that is painted along the side that looks like some uh, some stone faces this is our cart I'll make sure to look for it if, if I am in need of, an, of more transport and uh, Selene is going to be <laughs> dragging the count the naturified Chasimir out of the back of the cart as you begin that, the the wife goes on the top of her husband's head and, uh, get out, help! And, uh, <laughs> and, and so this, well, he certainly is a, you know, he doesn't come from a very rich family, it appears. Uh, he must work the land or something because, uh, as he hops out, I mean, he stands up kind of, sounds like a transformer almost as he stretches and everything like crackles and pops like uh stretches his back out here and we have a pretty stacked dude um and uh yeah he he says some things in infernal and the and the, the wife will uh, will translate into um uh, into uh abyssal apparently cuz since you revealed that um he asks do you want uh tap tap into pieces to make it easier uh, we're good at rock work oh no 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 tap tap um this is uh, a man who has been petrified turned to stone he needs to be healed no tap tap no tap tap no. little tap tap no <laughs> and he kind of looks he at only the... made a he made of salt. He he kind of he looks it over. Hmm. Speaks in infernal. The wife translates. Uh, if you want, we could give him maybe uh, better abs. Just little little tap tap. As are, you as he, are you as implying much... Casimir does not have best abs? <laughs> <laughs> um. 
as much as I'm sure he would enjoy that, I don't know what that would do to him after we uh, turn him back to normal. So best not. The the uh, the wife translates to the husband. They they both uh, they both look at each other uh, and look at you. Okay, no tap tap. And uh, he goes over and uh, he grabs a rake uh, from a, a, a little like a. I don't know, think like a pickup truck and people have like the the tool uh like the, yep. the toolboxes that go against the cab in the back of the the, the area there opens it up yep. and uh and he gets a rig that looks like uh he can he can uh it attaches to his tail and he can also put it over his shoulder so he can wrap he can wrap a strap around something and use his tail also to help haul and hold things um and uh <laughs> And you're uh, you're getting to learn a little bit of uh, a little bit of infernal here, as apparently he's uttering some curse words uh, since the wife is refusing to translate. And uh... I, I would, <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure, being in Mesabasca for long enough, I probably know the basics of curse cursing in infernal. Yeah, you're you're picking up a couple of the the choice words here uh, that that are local. Um, uh, well, I mean, not necessarily local, but like native to the language that is, is spoken yeah. here as well, since they're they're country folk. And so uh, he takes it into the temple. Of course, you go in there as well. Um, it's uh, there are there are people. By the time you reach there, uh, there are people that are coming in. There are also a couple wagons that have uh, bodies that are covered in sheets, like wrapped in sheets, that are also being brought in. As I mean, hospitals also have morgues. People go to there to get better, and also people go there to get processed. Um, in a sense. That they do. Um, and, you know, this, of course, was a, a disaster. And uh, I should say, on the way, you're just... Uh, is, and because you're being quiet, you know, with the, the ambient noise of the drivers, all kinds of rumors were flying in the streets. Uh, you know, some form... It was the Shadahar Empire that uh, finally... Uh, this must be at the wars breaking out. Uh, this is um, all kinds of... Uh, all kinds of things that are... are there's no real consistency, but everyone is having fantastic uh, thoughts at what has occurred. Um, so anyway, you you enter the temple. Uh, you see that there are other followers of Weejas uh, who are are ushering people, and so someone in clerical robes uh, will come up uh, to you, like especially as he's hauling, uh, as you have this uh, this man who's hauling this salt statue, um, and very carefully, uh, you know, he isn't just uh, he isn't just handling it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so he comes out. Uh, yes, what, what do you need? Diamond dust. Looks over. This man has been petrified. Oh, natrified. Petrified and sold. What was the... How did this happen? What, did, did that... Uh, and he, he actually... Wait, was this a result of the explosion? No. No. This was uh, this was something off the coast. Nothing to do with the with what's going on in the city right now. But he is very helpful, and we need him healed. Off the coast. Um. Um. Selena pull Selena pull out a map and show them where they were when it happened, because she she'll know about where. What caused this? I, I you're you're being led into a into it's like, it's like a it's like a it's like a creature of some kind that came from the deep. It destroyed it destroyed a couple of ships off the shore, and uh... our ships or their ships. Uh, heavy heavy inflection on their ships. Mixture. Hmm. I wonder if that has if that could help quench the rumors. This was. Something the the shadow heart. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Journeyman. And also thank you for the the lurk earlier. I, I think I said it in chat, but if not, then I appreciate you being here. Um, tell me, this explosion. What what is left in the in in the blast area? Do you know? No, no. Uh, a couple of our uh, a couple of our uh, priests and priestesses have gone out to tend to the wounded and to well also look into the uh, the magical nature of just what happened. Uh, a tower just appeared, and as it did, it uh, it just seemingly exploded and it injured many people. Uh, 
So some of our some of our people are out there to investigate, and others are left behind to try and clean up or uh, do what do mm. what we of the cloth do. That sounds distinctly not Shatterhar to me. I agree, but uh, what do I know? I'm I'm not uh, as learned as some of the superiors here. Uh, that being said, uh, I believe that we can we can spare some of the components, though. Uh, I imagine that you'll have to uh, you'll also have to help our order, as I don't recall you being around here. But of course, we'll take all the help we can get. But if you're willing to uh, to help take in the the dead and dying, um, then we'd appreciate it. And I'm sure that yep, the, the uh, superiors could look the other way. Selena will hold up her symbol, and she's like, "I can do that." Good. Uh, well, any uh, not said it necessarily. I mean, it probably comes off as a little offensive, sort of that any port in a storm. Uh, but that's it's not necessarily aimed at you. This person doesn't seem to know that you are this discredited kind of loner that went, you know, that did what you did in your own background. But um, but he just seems to be it. just exasperated due to everything that's currently yeah. happening. That like, I'll fine, I'll I'll take anyone I can get. I mean, as far as, uh, I mean, as far as far as the Order of Weejas is concerned, like, the Order of the Crimson Lady is concerned, she's totally A-OK. -okay. The, uh, the discreditation came from her, uh, her surgeon background. Okay. Um, when she, when she learned to do, first to do surgery and medicine, it was more the a Academy of Medicine that discredited her rather than the Order of Weejas. Because the Order of Weejas just takes in whoever, so long as they're, you know, if they follow the rules. There you're okay. Um, I should also ask, by the way, uh, because th this yes. would have been done before uh, before getting on the uh, on the cart. Uh, yeah. Are you? How are you covered up? Because remember, uh, you, you get I'm... face, hand, or I mean, depending on your presentation of, of your clothes and whatnot. Yeah. So um, I'm wearing long like long clothing as yeah. I normally do because I have my normal gear. So that's covered my arm and hand, and I'm wearing my mask. So that. That stuff is invisible, um, because you know it'd be rather frightening. Because I also have the Epimorian eye on me, so Jacques can't actually oh, yeah. cover me at the moment. Jacques can't cover you. That's right. Okay, uh, and th that's fine. I mean, the masks would have been, um, I, and of course, I mean for for you all teleporting in, you know, the, the teleportation area is sort of like a yeah. They have a sign up reminding it's cultural. Please put your masks on before yeah. uh, before it's leaving. It's time to put such, your mask but, on before you leave. Okay, but yeah. sure. Uh, so you're you're masked and you're going in. Um, no one's asked you to take it off, uh, even inside the building. Not that you have to anyway, but uh, sure. All right, so you're uh, you're covered. You're not presenting though that you are partially skeletonized. No, okay. I am not presenting that. Okay, that would scare people. All right, that or that or would make me be worshipped like like a goddess. Either or. So uh, you I'm have uh, to take that risk. for Diamond Dust today. Uh, you are promising your services uh, to the uh, to the order for a while to. You know, to help people to come up with things, that's, and of course, as information nice. comes in, you might be able to you know turn some things over in your in your noggin. All right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, to fast forward at least a little bit here to bring Dark Wolf slash Casimir back into it, uh, uh, Casimir, you are uh, something something inside you just begins to I don't know like tickle and then sort of like radiate out from you. And then just suddenly this crust of salt just poof, bursts and your axe comes down. And you see that there are, you see Celine's off to one side and there's another person dressed similarly off to the other. And Where did, uh, they, where, it, where did they aim me? <laughs> Do I like chop a table? Uh, no, uh, not, uh, you, you didn't chop a table, but they, they're definitely like standing on either side of you. And the okay. other person you don't recognize says, oh, oh I, I guess that, uh, I guess that happened as you said it would. Uh, and, uh, you are Wait, in some kind of a ceremonial no chamber, uh, candles, very fancy stonework, a very, a very macabre, uh, decor, uh, decor inside of it. Um, and there you are on a, um, you are on a, uh, a platform of sorts, uh, it, or like an altar. And, uh, there's also, uh, an middle-aged, uh, maybe uh, getting towards the, the back nine of middle-aged tiefling man uh, who's standing there uh, very burly, arms crossed hmm, and just kind of gives a 
gives a look. And, uh... Ugh, no tap tap. He tries to imitate in common. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's why he'll respond in... Uh, she'll respond in, um, Abyssal. It's like, yeah, that's why. <laughs> well, slow. There you are. Um... Welcome what? back to the well. Welcome back to welcome back to the waking world, Casimir. We're in Mask of Horns. This is the Temple of Weejas, and uh. Okay. Big stuff's going down. Uh, you got you got you, okay. you got petrified on the beach, so we brought you here to heal you. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. We are in Mask of Horns. Yes. City? Teleportation from Mordecai. Okay. Yeah. I need mask. Oh, it's fine. Hold on. I have mask. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh, what, what does your mask Good. look like, Casimir? I have a picture. Hold on. Oh, snap. I'm spoiling us here. It is, of course, made out of a, another piece of sand dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so th there you go, Celine. So you have kind of this uh, this hide. That's been uh, that's been kind of cured and, and chipped into, uh, so you have this sand dog uh, mask with eye slits and uh, kind of a jagged feature coming down. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's like, right. So now that that's happened, uh. So uh, where are where are others? They're at Ground Zero currently assessing the situation. Honestly, I would like to get out there and have a look myself, see what's going on. Um, okay. A tower appearing from nowhere and exploding. That's... That sounds odd. We should check it as out. A, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a... As a... Um, as I said to you, uh... Oh, what would it be? Bishop? father or or padre or whatever for his rank in the church oh um we could whatever you'd like <laughs> yeah, it's like as 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 i was saying padre that is distinctly not shadaha it reminds me of something else well perhaps you can stick around and help us put more clues together as, uh, as we're treating people who are coming in, uh, different accounts, uh, all the wild rumors uh, also. Uh, we need not just yeah. magical aptitude, but uh, some investigators who can help us piece together uh, the, well, the everything. It's People, it's parts, something, buildings. It's something that I am exceptionally good at, so I can help you with that. Um... um the what I will do very quickly as well mm -hmm. is I'm gonna send a sending to Mordecai. Okay. Um, and it's simply going to say, "Made it to the temple. Casimir's free. Rendezvous there when you when you're able." Yeah. Gotcha. Nice simple reply. Admittedly, it's at least two syllables and not a lowercase k in response. Um, <laughs> <laughs> k. <laughs> uh, that's the chaotic evil response. <laughs> Tower out of nowhere. On fire. Riots everywhere. Need help. K. K. <laughs> it's like, alright, um... So, while we're here, Casimir... Yes. Are you capable of casting magic at all? A little bit, not not too much, but uh, some some stuff. Anything, anything healing based? Anything that might help? Yes, um, I can I can uh, cure a few wounds. It's very useful in the uh, wilderness. Cool, good. Then we shall get to work. Uh. Padre will probably need to have a chat with the uh, whoever is the high the attending high priest here at the temple. You'll have there a chance is, uh... to to meet uh, to meet him when he comes back. 
All right. Then for now, Casimir, we should get to healing. Well, and well, Celine pops her hands together and okay. get out there and get to healing some bodies. Uh, so, Casimir, you, you want to stick around and uh, do some field dressings and use your, your curative magics? Well, you're not you're not bound to stay here if you want to go back to the you're not bound to stay. It's up to you to ingratiate yourself or to to work beside uh, Celine. Well, I'll stick with Celine. All right, Celine is a very loyal healer. She, you know, she makes sure she tends to people on those gurneys, just sort of you know bending over and checking them head to toe and wiggling around and uh, just every once in a while, you know, arches her back out. Oh, actually, I, ooh, that actually felt good. I think I popped something good. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so sure, Casimir and Celine are, uh, are are gonna stay beside uh, beside each other and helping to, to bring people, save lives, save limbs. Uh, hopefully, more often than not. Uh, but of course, uh, Casimir, this is kind of a I say this is a grizzly sight, but uh, I mean, what a grizzly bear is kind of favorable. Uh, uh, you know, it's not like you haven't hunted stuff like that before. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm good with blood. That's fine. Yeah. Good with blood, you know, meat. Hey, you gotta eat, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, alright, you two are staying behind. Mordecai, you got this message. Uh, Investigator Stillwaters, you're on your way to the jail, but let's cut back to Mordecai and Bright. Uh, you've been looking at the flames. It doesn't appear to be illusion. Uh, obviously, the minute has passed since you've cast Calm Emotion. Um, but uh, how? W any other interactions that uh, either of you'd like to make? And also, can I have each of you roll me 2d20? Okay. Ooh, all these double numbers. Yikes. Um, all right. I mean, nothing... Does that mean we have to go to jail? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you do it three times. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Investigator Stolters is already planning on that. For you guys, at least. <laughs> um, now, uh, Mordecai, uh, not uh, not that they, they haven't been around, but especially after you get this message from Celine. Uh, you do see in, in your cursory examination, there are some robed figures dressed similarly to Celine who must be here on behalf of uh, the the Ouija's clerics. Some were over in the medical pavilion that was set up. However, these ones seem to be circling the flames and are um, and are examining things closely. And you notice that the ones who are examining the flames are not tieflings. Hmm. Okay. So I wanted to, where we had our cut, uh, I was hoping to get a sense of how well the calm emotions protected me from the fire. Um, you are, I mean, it, it's disturbing, uh, but you are not, you don't feel this kind of emotional burning. Uh, there's no physical heat. Um, you know, there is this, this kind of a, a heatedness that would be almost like a, like a fight or flight. Like you just sort of breathe a little heavier. You start sweating. Like your body is, is getting into, uh, a, into a, an, an emotional, uh, panic or a passion or a fit of some kind. Uh, the calm emotion does seem to, to draw it away. Uh, though in the meta sense, as I was talking to Mordecai, how Mordecai is, more influenced um it would just be kind of a weird it'd be a weird feeling for you but you aren't as affected as uh mordecai had been the in the calm emotion the calm emotions did suppress that and so you could you could be more rational more more logical without any dis, uh, distractions from the fire now your own thoughts or feelings are your own uh, you know the spell obviously doesn't m mess with that um, but the the extra things that you were feeling are suppressed for that minute. Okay. So, Mordecai, do you think you could make it through the fire if we wanted to go? I don't see why not. I would probably well, have to... Maybe we, can, um, maybe we can... Maybe we can overhear these um, those clerics first. Um, you know what? This sounds like a job for a cricket. If only we had a cricket. Oh, look! I have a cricket. Um, can you go Use over and yeah, she's really handy. Um, don't don't <laughs> don't stand in the fire; it could burn you. Um, I don't know how that works with crickets, but it probably wouldn't. 
wouldn't be very good. But uh, if you could go over and um, maybe just eavesdrop on those clerics over there, that'd be real nice. Thank you. Okay, so you're going to summon Peggy Sue? And have her go eavesdrop on the clerics for me. Okay. Uh, as you do, uh, you get a... Uh, for a moment, uh, Peggy Sue manifests, but manifests as like a little, like a, a little silver critter that once more uh, in this kind of whispered draconic voice in your head repeats the verse and then finally in kind of like a, a poof turns into Peggy Sue the Cricket. That's very awful. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, but it's good to know. Um, we might be able to control that soon. Because uh, I would like to figure out what the deal is with that little dragon thing. But I have other pressing issues right now. Those clerics. Mordecai, do you speak Draconic? Uh, no, but I could use a spell slot or a ritual to cast Comprehend Languages. Uh, if you wish. However, the, the thing spoke a, a verse and ended up leaving. It turned into a cricket. If we're going to be spending a minute, I might ritual cast it. Depends on how long we're going to have. Well, let's see what, what Peggy Sue comes back with first, and then we can decide. Sure. Um, okay. So, uh, Peggy Sue uh, is, uh, is sent over the fire? Into the fire? Oh, she's she's not going in the fire. She's just going to go eavesdrop on the clerics. Oh, eavesdrop. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So, boing, 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 boing. And uh, she makes her way over to the clerics. And um, they are... Uh, they're speaking in a mix of common and infernal. Um, and uh, it, the basic conversation over, you know, some time that you're listening in through Peggy Sue is uh, they're they're not sure what's happening. They're they're going down some kind of a checklist that they have, um, but uh, in the immediacy, they don't seem to know what's happening. Um, so that's not very okay, Mordecai. They don't know anything, so it looks like we're going to be on our own. Um, testing comprehend languages. It's going to take him. It's. Uh, ten. Okay. Uh, well, he's doing that. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find someone who, who's calm enough that I can ask around. And um, that when this started, if it started today or if it started yesterday. Sure. Uh, are you looking for someone in particular, uh, someone well-to-do, a uh, merchant or other clergy? Are you looking oh, for a particular someone... race like a tiefling or a dragonborn or someone? Oh, um... Actually, if I were looking for someone, it probably wouldn't be a tiefling. I mean, if there's a gnome, that'd be the best. But failing that, I would look for an elf. Um, tell you what. Failing just, that, I would look for a human. Just uh, <laughs> there's plenty of humans around. There, there are a dime a dozen. Um, go ahead and roll a roll a d twenty. Let's see if there's a gnome here. Elf. Uh, there's not, but there is. Uh, there is an elf. Um, okay, that'll do. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, there, there is someone of elven heritage here, uh, who is uh, is taking in the scene and, and kind of just nodding and uh, and and has a and has a, a friend uh, with him as well, and uh, they're they're speaking to each other in elvish as they're regarding the scene and, and kind of looking around. Um, and this is all in elvish. In elvish. Uh, hello, okay. hello, sir. Uh, can you tell me? Or did did this just happen, or did it start? Oh, well, look at you. Uh, Hi, I'm down here. What, what what a darling little gnome, and uh, and from the accent, uh, I in... get that. You can rub <laughs> my head if you like. Oh, <laughs> they look at each other. It's good luck. Can both of us rub your head? Of course. Oh, the, gnome, <laughs> the gnomes back home don't appreciate it when we do this, and each of the elves reach and, and touch your uh, touch your head. Uh, it's uh, refreshing, I guess, to be out of Aslandia. Uh, the, um, the accent they're speaking is more of the uh, more of the the lofty, not necessarily snooty, but more of the the high elven accent. And uh, oh, oh, thank you, Misfit. Thank you for re-upping and welcome. 
Uh, so, we were, were in town on business, uh, as we're here to try and uh, b broker some mercantile services between us and Aslandia. And, well, we were in one of the marketplaces, and there was quite a ruckus. And we figured we'd come and see what was happening, as, well, there's opportunity in everything, especially to, uh, to help people. Uh, and, well, I'm not sure that anything that we can do can help this situation, but it's always good to know what's happening. Yeah, so, uh, so you're from Aslandia. That's interesting. Some friends of mine just got back from there. Oh, uh, I hope they had a wonderful time. Did, did they travel up the river to our city? Oh, it's a beautiful oasis in the desert. Uh, no, not exactly. Um, they get into some trouble with the Shadowhar. Um, oh. Do you know about about that? Oh, of course. I'm surprised that the news hasn't spread that... Uh, poor, poor Aslandia. Yeah, the Shadowhar just continue to push from the north, and uh, the north and the east, coming down through our desert, and of course... Oh, no. There's not exactly a lot of defenses there, because who would bother to live in the <laughs> desert? Uh, I think that there's a fort or two. Those are the only those are the only bastions of uh, defense that we have. Yeah, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that they pass by the forts without any trouble at all. But um, uh, so, are you planning on going back there, or are you planning on staying here? Oh, to Aslandia? Oh, yes, of course we'll be returning. Perhaps in, uh, in a couple weeks, uh, this might, this might make us need to reconsider our options, though. Yeah, uh, so I would, I would love to help Aslandia out against the Shadowhar, but before, uh, because I'm actually, I represent a group of people, we're called Chroma Company, and we, uh, sometimes we help people who are in trouble, and sometimes we don't help them as much, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> but we always try, and um, uh, I'd love to help you guys out, but before we can do that, we need to f kind of solve this problem here, so if there's anything you can tell me about how this got started or when, that would be really nice. I can't tell you anything that you probably haven't already heard. Uh, and he'll go down a list of rumors, nothing seems to really be new there. Um, you know, but he, he does make the comment that these... Uh, you know, these, these fires seem to just be really, uh, I mean, really strange. They, they haven't seen anything like that. Um, one second. You know, when they, when this fire started exactly? Well, it, it happened when the, this, apparently this tower wasn't here, and then it was, but then it wasn't afterwards, at least in this partial state, and especially the being on fire I, apparently happened with this explosion. Really? Uh, uh, so when was that? <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. You you probably would have been traveling through the city because uh, you you teleported yeah kind of earlyish in the morning, uh, and and going through this doing some cursory examinations. It's been about an hour, so I don't know. We'll say we'll say this happened around uh, ten a.m. or so, and it's now about eleven. Okay, so it happened this morning. That's what I'm kind of getting at. Yes, yeah. So that's that's interesting. Um, so, we, um, we were doing was fighting some mana wars, and we, we kind of had a little, little fight with them, uh, just at the same time that, um, that there was a, a, a weird creature in the water, and it seems like that happened just at the same time that this tower appeared. It could just be a coincidence, because we know that this was kind of in the in the place where there was some magical research going on, and that probably exploded too, so, I don't know, I'm just trying to put pieces together. Oh, we're not sure what Man of Wars would have to do with this. Uh, those are just creatures of the sea, and... Oh, yeah, we're on the sea, but this is... I, I don't think uh, that there was any sort of, like, a, a fish market that was going on here. Nothing for the... No, not like that. But be. the Man of Wars had a, had a creature that was, like, their leader. It was like a... Um, like a big sea anemone. Oh, well... Which is how it's pronounced in Elvish. I can't say that I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I'm particularly familiar with uh, the, the comings and goings of the, the mana wars that infest these waters this time of year. Um, anyway, you've, you've been a lot of help. You know, if you want, we could stay in touch. I have some, some magical communication spells. If you just tell me uh, 
you know, if I mean, we'd love to help out Aslandia. I mean, I'm sure you appreciate that that's not entirely altruistic, but enemy of, of my enemy is my friend, so to speak. So we'd love to help you out. Um, if you just tell me, you know, who you are, your names or, or something that we could use to, to find you, we might be able to help you in the future. Ah, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, he, he grabs a card uh, for uh, the trading company that they represent and uh, hands it to you and he tells you which uh, he tells you which hotel they're staying in uh, which is in a different district by the uh, the mercantile uh, ward and it does say uh, on the card purveyors of fine freshwater pearls and um, uh, and, and so uh, you can find us there uh, in fact if you have any connections with uh, the jewelers guild uh, they are aware of us as well and you can always pass on a message Okay, yeah. Um, actually, in my line of work, we sometimes use some pearls. Um, so I'm really glad to make your acquaintance. My name's my name's Bright, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Oh, Bright, it's a the pleasure is all ours. I assure you. And he kind of bends forward and uh, takes your hand okay. delicately, and and gives you like a fine mm, like on on the top in in greeting. Uh, uh, and, and the other elf does the same. That's so nice. I'll do a nice uh, curtsy for them. I'll oh, you, over you Octan gnomes are so, so different than the Aslandian ones. Yeah, it's a little different, different heritage. Okay, okay, bye. And then I run over to Mordecai. <laughs> the, <laughs> the difference the, between trees and rocks. The the elves just kind of you know like they, they, they they like you know bye and they go back to talking for a little bit. Mordecai, uh, bright kind of runs up to you. Is my spell finished yet? Um, sure. Yeah, we, we can say they've been talking for ten minutes. Okay. I can now understand all languages. Okay. Yeah, well, that's nice. <laughs> um, so, let's see if I can make that thing happen again. So, I'll poof Peggy Sue away, and then I'll poof her back up again. Okay, and... It's into a dragon thing. Um, Peggy Sue just kind of turns her head and looks at you quizzically with wobbly antennas. So, hi, so do you remember the last time I conjured you up, there was a little, uh, like a little weirdness where you got, like, booped to the side and there was a little dragon thing, and then it was gone and then it was you again? Does that sound familiar? Okay, um, well, we'll keep looking. I hope it, I hope it works out. Okay, that's all. Okay, bye. It's going to be not safe for you in here, so I'll probably put you away. I'll let you go back to your place. I hope you have a, a good book or something to read. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, she if, really likes to watch Pinocchio. It's her favorite. <laughs> if, uh, if you'd like, you could try to recall the, the sounds yourself. Uh, you've heard it several times. Uh, you know, you're a smart sure. cookie. Okay. Sure, I could do that. I don't have keen mind, but maybe I can yeah, pass just... a check. Uh, just make a general intelligence check. Okay. Do, do, do. Hey, that's a cool that's natural a... 20. All right. Um, so, uh, Mordecai, uh, Bright's kind of pondering, and uh, she gets, she begins to, to mimic what she heard repeated. Um, as she does for a moment, her eyes, like, she just gets a, a, a silver sheen, like a, like, I almost how like a passing cloud would put like a, a, a little faint shadow on someone or the light hits someone's eyes and they really sparkle kind of a thing. For a brief moment, you just get a kind of a silver sheen and these other eyes that appear on bright. Uh, and the words, uh, the words that she speaks uh, are as follows. Uh, you, you may want to write this down. I now have paper. All right. Iron roof, glass walls, burns and burns, and never falls. And then when the phrase finishes, that silver sheen and the odd eyes kind of disappear. And uh, she's back to being her lovely bright self. Can I roll an insight check to see if that was a different personality of some kind? Uh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Four. 
this, well, you know, Bright is a bit of a trickster, though mm. with something like this that she's shown a passion about discovering, uh, there's something going on here uh, that this was... It wasn't Bright for a moment. Now, Bright, as far as you know, you delivered, you know, you, you repeated the lines. and In fact, you probably think you did a very good job of it, too. Um, you know, you're not necessarily aware of any sort of complexion or vision change. Uh, but Mordecai, you, you saw this uh, little, like, sheen for a moment. The words came out, and then it went away. And Bright is just, you know, herself. That was weird. Draconic's a weird language. <laughs> no, your eyes kind of glazed over silver. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. That's weird. And so, kind of in an intonation that you don't necessarily use? Yeah, because I usually, I mean, I usually don't, like, I know some people like to chant their spells, and it's, you know, it's kind of really an affectation. I'm really just more of a, you know, I just usually mumble the words and get it over with. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, I, and then super weird. Yeah, and then I translate it to you. Mm -hmm. So, Iron... I mean, it's it's probably a lamp, cause that's like it's probably a riddle, and the answer is probably a lamp. I mean, that does, that would make sense. Yeah. What never falls. Yeah, because, I mean, because it doesn't burn up, right? It's just there. I mean, sometimes you can drop it, and then it falls, but probably not. That's not what they mean. So, um... wouldn't be wrong. So, um, you know, why don't we see if we can find ourselves a nice dragonborn? Somebody who's going to speak draconic. Because I know, I saw some dragonborn around here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, why yeah, don't we see if we can find one? Let's do that. Important. I can understand Draconic, I guess, for another hour. Uh, I, it's a blessing and a curse. There's all sorts of people here, and you get to understand everything that everyone is saying all the time. So, don't go to the nail salon, because they say bad things about you. The languages <laughs> they think you don't understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then they realize that you do speak Mandarin Chinese. <laughs> um, all right, I would like each of you to roll 2d20 for me, please. 15 and 7. Okay. Okay. Nothing happens. That's not expected for the circumstances. Um, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, so uh, I need to get up and take a personal break, so why don't we take about a 10-minute break to get up, get a snack or something. Uh, and right. when we come back um, for our good our good investigator and his, uh, and his uh, prisoner, or his detainee, if you want to be softer about it, uh, we'll come back, and as, as these investigations are going on at the tower, we can have you ask questions or find your way to, uh, to the jail. But let's, uh, let's take about 10 minutes and get a snack and a drink, etc., and we'll be back to uh, to finish things out. Because you do have to go in about an hour and a half, correct, uh, Lethality? Yeah, okay. yeah, no, uh, I am I am DMing this week, as you know, yes, with the characters yes, that you yes. created on stream. Um, I did make one or two minor changes to the um, to the magical items. Uh, yeah, it's your game. It's and and I, I was having a little bit of fun, you know, if, either with the curse or all that other stuff, so. All right, um, I, I I gotta get up and, and, and take a break here, so I yeah. will uh, I'll see you all back in about ten minutes or so. Alrighty.